for over 150 years, one convincing lie has prevented billions from knowing the truth about who they are, why they're here, and most important, who created them. Really, we only have two possibilities. We just happened, or somebody made us. Genesis Paradise Lost is the most important film you will ever see regarding the creation of the world. Explore the evidence, experience the creation, discover the truth. Evolution has a lot of unintended consequences that I'm not sure everyone's thought about. You have no meaning. There's no reason for you to exist. It's not science versus religion. It's a worldview clash. Order now. Genesis Paradise Lost at jackhibbs.com. This exclusive DVD or on-demand offer is available now. Go to jackhibbs.com to get all the information to receive and see Genesis Paradise Lost, a film you will never forget. Know truth, and the truth shall set you free. Well, we want to welcome you guys to this special gathering for Happening Now. And uh, before I bring Amir in, I just want you to, to know that I'm grateful for him being flexible. As you guys have been watching the news around us, uh, around the world, and what's taking place in the Ukraine with Russia, uh, Amir uh, will be joining us in just about a second uh, from Honolulu, Hawaii. Uh, I'm here at home. And um, the reason why in such a critical uh, time as what's taking place, it is essential, it's necessary for us to interrupt uh, your schedule and our schedules. So Amir, why don't you come on in and with the time that we have, uh, let's let's take a look at what's going on in the world. So Amir, hopefully you can join us. Yeah, I hope so. Hey, how are you, Jack? It's good to be here awesome. with you. It, it's good to see you. Uh, so Amir, let's just pray right now. Uh, Lord, we just ask of you, Father God, that you'd be, uh, first of all, with not only the Ukrainian people, but Lord, that um, you would be with the region. And Father, that there are believers uh, there in that part of the world. I have no doubt that even in the Russian army, there's believers. But Father, we pray that you would uh, make sure that in our own lives, God, that we would be following you and not the headlines, that we'd be following your word and not any hype. In fact, perhaps more than ever, these happening nows uh, have been brought together for such a time as this. So, Lord, we give it all to you now in Jesus' name. So, uh, uh, Amir, um, people are going to want to know, what are we talking about? I know you and I on our own separate platforms began announcing yesterday that uh, this whole thing with Russia and the Ukraine had advanced to a point where uh, 
it was mentioned that war is imminent. We started to see it from other international publications. Right. And then from some of our nation's activities, Israel included, with evacuations and all. But mm -hmm. uh, listen, jump on in and we'll cover as much as we can yeah. in an hour's time. No problem. So, Jack, the situation is like this. Intelligence uh, uh, organizations of, of countries all around the world are convinced that uh, Putin is about to invade in the imminent uh, uh, future, which means it can happen any minute. And the reason is very simple. He already started activating uh, GPS disrupting uh, units. He already brought all of his naval ships all around the Black Sea. He already, uh, he already brought field hospitals because, you know, you can... You can, uh, you can threaten that you, you're going to start a war, but if there's no field hospitals around on your side, that means you're not really serious. So he's got that one covered. He starts tomorrow a naval exercise on the Black Sea and one that already begun in Belarus. So he's actually holding them from both sides. And he uh, he's rejecting all international effort. In fact, um, just a few days ago, uh, Macron, uh, some people think, you know, he might be the Antichrist or something, and that the guy is a clown. Uh, <laughs> he, he, he came all the way, he came all the way to Moscow to try to appease Putin and look, look what Putin did to him. And they, 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 they finished a press conference um, <clears throat> in Moscow. And if we, if we put the video, uh, the press conference was over. T take a look. Putin was turning around and leaving the room without having to wait even for Macron, who is just walking like a little puppy behind him. If that's not it, look at the picture from the actual meeting to see how Putin is not even... Look, I mean, the huge table. They say that Putin was angry that Macron did not want to test for COVID with the Russian test. Macron probably didn't want his DNA to be in the Russian's hand. All of that to show you that a lot of trust is not there at all. Meeting uh, on the phone with President Biden today did not uh, bring any results. Meeting with Macron again, meeting with Johnson, all of that is nothing. One embassy after another is closing. The British embassy even lowered the flag. They turn off the lights. The U.S. embassy has been evacuated. Um, the uh, French embassy, the Canadian embassy, the Australian embassy, and of course, we're talking about Israel, we're talking about Norway, many, many different countries. They close all their embassies and there is a there is a, a, a attempt right now to get everybody out of it. And it's interesting because that's not the only thing that is going out of the Ukraine. Take a look at this, Jack. The last 48 hours, both Britain and America are pulling their troops you would think that they're, you know, sending troops to help the Ukraine. No, they're actually pulling their troops right. out. Take a look. Um, both the UK uh, pulled their troops that came to train the Ukrainian army, and the US also pulled their 150 military trainers from Ukraine. So basically, Ukraine uh, is only getting ammunition and weapons, but it's not having any boots on the ground of any other country. And, uh, and that may be the reason why Putin is so sure that he can just do it like that. Um, it's not the only thing, Jack. Today, in broad daylight, the Russians sent attack helicopters so everybody will see. Take a look at the... the, the I mean, they flew low above the entire country. Um, I mean, everybody could see them flying all oh, over the area. And then when they reached the Ukrainian border, they landed, if you can see the second video, they actually landed so everyone who drives nearby can see them. Look how many helicopters are actually on the ground waiting for the right, um, you, know, uh, you know, the right thing to move. That's not the only thing. A uh, U.S. submarine was detected by the, um, by the um, uh, Russians, a Virginia submarine, and uh, the... They say that the, 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 there is a Russian destroyer that used special means and the right. submarine withdrew from that Kirill Sea. Lots yeah. of lots of stuff is going on. Okay, so yeah. Jack, we're in the eve of, of a big war, basically. Uh, Amir, what you said, uh, I, I have a lot to comment on a lot of things, but one of the things that you just said is something that the United States for decades has prided itself on, and that is our ability to keep our, our locations of our submarines secret. 
and whatever Russia has, uh, they've been able to detect that. Um, that's that's uh, just part of the story in the direction that we could see this all go. Now, everybody, remember, we started happening now some time ago so that we could defuse the insanity of craziness. So what we want to do is make sure we don't uh, in any way, shape or form, gender craziness. So the things that we talk about, some of the things are happening for example, Amir just showed the pictures of the helicopters. I watched that today on international news services. I, I saw that as well. Unfortunately, Amir, nobody in the United States saw that. That wasn't shown on U.S. news, and, and, and neither was this, I bet you. I watched today on uh, Sky News out of London that uh, Russia, Putin has deployed four days ago uh, his hypersonic uh, missile system, his uh, which is incredible because you don't park that thing next to the Ukraine and expect to use it on the Ukraine. The hypersonic missile that, that Russia has can go somewhere in the vicinity of eight to 9,000 miles an hour. This is set up in the area, Amir, to deter any U.S., any right. European involvement. This is them saying, uh, you you try any NATO, you, you make a way toward us and you got you got this thing to deal with, yeah. and and that is no that is no joke, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. That hypersonic missile is something that is literally invincible. Uh, there's no yeah, technology. There is no, there, yeah, there is no, no air defense system that can destroy it. There is yeah, no exactly need. correct. So um, Amir, tell the people um, and, and do it. Let's do it quickly because I know we touched on it a few weeks ago. Tell the people why 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 is Putin doing this right now? Okay. Of all times, what's yeah. he doing? Why is he doing this to the Ukraine? Yeah, well, a couple of weeks ago, it's happening now at your church. I mentioned that since 2014, Putin is already contemplating on doing this move. He already started great funds and, 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 and in a way he created a, enough wealth to not, yeah. not have to break down under the sanctions that the West or America are threatening uh, with. And in fact, not only that, he made sure that there will be enough dependency of, on, on Russian gas in Europe. So it won't have, in fact, uh, if you, if, if you want to see, there is a map of all the gas that is flowing from Russia. Let's put it over there. The, Ru the Russian gas uh, right. that is flowing all the way, um, slide 13, all the way um, to into the uh, 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 European continent. Not this one. Yes. Take a look at how many gas pipes are there from Russia into Europe. No, everybody talks about Nord Stream 2, which may not work if they will sanction, but there is Nord Stream 1, and there is the via uh, the, the Ukraine ones, and there is another one, the Turk Stream and the Blue Stream, and there's so many of them. Europe is addicted to Russian gas, and when the 45th president offered an Israeli gas pipe to go through Cyprus and Greece and Italy to be a counterbalance to this, and, and guess who is now dismissing it? It's the 46th president. It's unbelievable. I mean, on one yeah. hand, he's, I mean, you, you see that you don't even understand how, how they think. And by the way, Jack, just so you know, in the Arab Shiite world, America is being perceived weak just by ways of closing its embassy. Look at this. Look at this picture that they prepared um, just because America is closing its embassy in a, in, in a country that is ally. Look what they put on Look, Saigon 1975, Kabul 2021, <laughs> yep. Kiev 2022. Yes. They just show that and they do it everywhere just to, it's a defiance. And you know, I don't believe America is weak by force. I believe America is perceived weak and that all that it takes for for people like Putin to, to make yeah. his move. And, and we know he would have never done that under the 45th president. Well, he with that... Yeah. With that, let me jump in. With that, let me jump in. I, I will, I will uh, probably make a lot of enemies uh, correcting you right now on what you just said um, about America's strength. Um, you that that we're being we're per, we're perceived as being weak. I I believe that America is weak. Let me tell you why. 
We have not won a war, Amir, since 1945. The United States has lost everything that we've been entangled with since 1945. Okay? The other thing is this. Um, you're right. The reason why this is happening is because bullies smell weakness. Everybody knows this. Every guy knows this. With Trump in office, this never would have happened. I don't care what anybody says. Putin, Xi Jinping, Kim Jong Un, they were they were scared of Trump. They didn't they didn't know what he would do if they tried something. And so for 4 years no no one on this on this uh, call or on this broadcast right now was in fear. Europe began to relax, Israel relaxed, uh, peace treaties were made. Um, and look, I'm not making Trump out to be some God, but people need to just kind of zip their lips shut and look around and see the results because you're talking about this gas line now that feeds Europe. Watch this. This gas line was never completed under Trump's administration. It was almost completed by Obama. Obama had sanctioned this thing and it was just almost completed and Trump came into office and stopped it. And Trump put Ted Cruz, Senator right. Ted Cruz on that to stop it. And Ted Cruz went against rhino Republicans and the Democrat party. And, and he was, his life had been threatened numerous times about this gas line, let it go through or you're gonna wake up dead. And Ted Cruz stayed on it like a dog on a bone and kept the gas from flowing into Europe, i.e. Germany. What's the conclusion now? Obama or Biden opens it up, they complete it, they open it up, and now Germany's dependent upon that energy, and now NATO wants Germany to stand up against Russia with them, and Germany is saying, no way, we can't, because we're not gonna shut the, have the gas shut off to Germany. This is a brilliant chess move on the board by Putin to divide NATO. NATO is irrelevant. The United States is irrelevant. But Amir, you and I know something about this because the scriptures tell us that when the nations are irrelevant, then Russia will move in against Israel, as we've talked exactly. many times regarding Ezekiel. Now, let me say one more thing, and then you can jump back in with whatever you have. I do not know Nobody knows if this is the formation of Ezekiel 38. One thing we do know is that it, we're close, but it mm -hmm. is possible. It is possible, everybody. There, it is possible that there could be a third world war that's not written about in Scripture. The first world war, the second world war, you can't find specifically in Scripture. It's very possible that we're on the brink of a third world war. And that, and I'm taking Ezekiel off the table now. I'm taking Armageddon off the table. I'm talking about the possibility of us within days or weeks entering into a third world war. Yeah. The players are there, Amir. You know history. China, China wants Taiwan. Yeah. And North Korea, they want Korea. And Putin wants the glory of former Russia. Yeah. All, the, and all of those alignments are there again. You're right. And in... And and while all of that is happening, there's another war in the Arabian Peninsula. And this is why today America sent four F-22s uh, flying right above Israel all the way to United Arab Emirates to help them. And uh, yesterday, Iran celebrated the 43rd anniversary to their Islamic revolution. And as always, the celebration cannot be completed without these are balloons, but the celebration cannot be completed without this particular picture of look what they were doing uh, to the Israeli flag. I think I think uh, it's there. If it's not there, oh, oh, yeah. of course, of course. So that's uh, you know, it's the same. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. This is from today, by the way. But I want you to know, Jack. I want you to know that um, now I will say this: regardless if there is going to be a war or not. I want you to take a look at the Black Sea and all the, there's about 30 ships at the Black Sea right now. Um, and, and you can clearly see it on the, on the, um, on the map with the, blue, with the red dots. Okay, all of these ships came from the Mediterranean. All of these ships will return to the Mediterranean and all of these ships will stay in the Mediterranean yeah. at their, at their um, 
port that they have in Syria. Now, the Russians also made a runway longer in Syria for their heavy bombers. Now, why heavy bombers in Syria? So what I'm saying is everything that is now, you know, when the world is watching Russia preparing for war with the Ukraine, is not going to move anywhere. But it's actually, if anything, it's going to move southeast to Syria and it will be used later on against us. So th this is an amazing transition of yes. power, of weapons that um, is, is happening before our very eyes. We, we wake up and we see 30 naval ships in the Mediterranean. I mean, a whole armada of ships is there with bombers, heavy bombers in Syria right now. And I, you know and I know that when such a thing is happening, Israel is, is very limited in the way it can act right now, uh, attacking Syria from Lebanon or above Syria from other places. So this is, this is the one thing um, I wanted to say is that whether there is war, and I believe there could be very much so one, or not, the, the direction of so much of Putin's um, military strength and power is going to be towards us eventually. And Israel is... Israel understands that, but we have a government that is blind to get the real intentions of Putin. You see, I think the Israeli government, maybe even Putin doesn't even know yet what he is going to do to Israel <laughs> or what Russia is going to do to Israel. But, but, but without them knowing even, they already move all the chess, uh, the, the, the chess right. parts uh, on the chessboard. And it's, it is phenomenal. I cannot believe that I'm saying that in 2022, right. 30, 30 naval ships of, of Russia could be seen from the shores of Israel. I mean, uh, and yeah. so you see, Ezekiel is definitely the one thing we must all pay attention to because that involves Israel. And I believe it also involves the church in a way because, you know, this is a war that I think will eventually bring the world to the place where they will look for the Antichrist to rise. Because let, let's face it, there is no leader in the world. Nothing. Right. There's a major leadership crisis in the world right now. And that is exactly why we see all of these things happening right exactly now. Exactly correct. Amir, well said. That's exactly correct. Um, and when you... Okay, let's so let's just do some hypothetical right now, some speculation. Um, like any war any war if it's a regional war or if it's a world war start somewhere it's got to start somewhere they always do and um so it could it, it's possible that uh this ukraine russian uh war begins uh and what happens is success breeds um it, it breeds boldness so if russia perceives that it's unchecked and believe me the united states will do nothing once Putin begins to move. It's only this, sanctions. This, <laughs> yeah, you know, but that's a whole nother thing. Russia is not, not bothered by U.S. sanctions. But the thing is, um, it's, uh, we won't do a thing. Uh, and if momentum builds, then that gives a lunatic like Vladimir Putin in his megalomaniac way of thinking, um, wow, no one's stopping me. Europe's running around hiding under sheets and blankets and Biden's doing circles in the Oval Office. I'm going to, I'm going to take Syria. I'm going to take this portion of North Africa. I'm going to take, I am going to, we don't know, but we know this. When success happens and we're assuming that, that Biden will have success over, I mean, sorry, Putin will have success over the Ukraine. It's sad to say that I'm just I'm just saying it could happen. Then a megalomaniac doesn't turn around content. Once he marches and tastes blood, they don't stop. They yeah. don't stop until they're stopped. And yeah. so how would you see this hypothetical play out in, in the region? I mean, it's interesting because this whole thing started with Russia submitting to NATO and America two papers. To NATO, they said, yeah. you must get rid of all the members since, uh, 90, if, since uh, uh, 1997. And to America, it says you must remove all your troops 
and your weapon from all those countries. So basically, Russia is saying America must get out of Europe and yes. Europe must get weaker and weaker. NATO is and, and basically what he's saying is this. Look, you guys, I want NATO not to threaten me. And what you are doing is you're adding more countries and more countries and you are a big threat. Since you are posing a threat to my country, I have the right to go against it. This is his logic. His logic is any way Ukraine was part of Russia before, it, yeah. why would you turn them against me? This is that's what he convinces himself that, right. that the that's West right. is concerning you. Uh, and this is, by the way, it goes back to even the 1930s when when Stalin starved the Ukrainians because they became nationalists. They kind of had their own thing going on. And so he basically asked the Ukrainians for a certain uh, grain quota, and they knew they can never really give it to him. So he basically closed all their villages and towns, and they starved to death. It happened before. Every Ukrainian know that. This is the Ukrainian Holocaust that was done by Stalin. They all know that. Russia has no problem bringing them to submission if Russia wants. And, and let's face it, do you know of any embassy that is now closing in Russia? Any foreigners that are now leaving Russia? No one, because everybody knows Russia is going to win. Nobody is thinking about running away from Russia. Everybody's running away from the Ukraine because it's a done deal. They understand if the Russian... Uh, uh, a bear is going to attack with the power that they have over there and 150,000 troops and everything else around, the Ukraine stands no chance. And, and I'm sorry to say the Ukrainian, uh, the Ukrainian today said uh, the following thing. Their chief of staff said, I'm ready to receive the enemies, not with flowers, but with stinger missiles, javelin missiles and anti-tank missiles, the NLAW, welcome to hell. And then the defense minister of Ukraine says, the armed forces are fully prepared to fight back, not to give up Ukrainian land. Today, we have the strongest army in Ukraine for the last 15 years and the strongest army in Europe. The Ukrainians are being convinced somehow that they have the power to stop Russia, which is sad for me. It's, sad. Uh, it's sad because the, the West is feeding them with anti-tank you know, anti missiles, good you know, but you and I know what can happen from the air yeah. and the rockets and the missiles that can come from the Black Sea, from Belarus and from the Russian part from three directions simultaneously. There, Kiev will fall within hours, not even days. And it, That's it, right. I'm that sorry to say, I really hope it won't happen. But if, I, if Putin moves forward, it will happen. I, I'm, I completely agree with you. Um, it's it's a, it's tragedy, but yet listen, um, the the confidence that we have as believers. I'm afraid sometimes people who don't know the Word of God um, might misunderstand us. Amir, I, we want to make this really clear: is that we're not happy about these things. We're not no. saying, "Oh boy, look what we get to report on," and isn't this fantastic? Oh, you know, let's get excited. Uh, a, a biblical battle could be forming. Listen, God's word is going to be fulfilled in God's timing. All what we are called to do is to know and to judge and to discern the times and the seasons. We are to have programs like this that you and I might sharpen our faith and be ready and always giving people the gospel. Exactly. of jesus christ and so we're, we're not to be afraid we're not to live in fear and anxiety no. this is not for us in this fact, is not for us. that's right in fact if an, if amir and i in any way cause you to be fearful then we have failed to give you the gospel okay these things that are happening the only reason why we're doing this right now is because uh scripture talks about wars and rumors of wars so we're going to be following this very very closely and, and this could be the beginning of more reports. We shall see. But please understand something. Amir and I do not trust in uh, our governments. We no. don't trust in our political leaders. We never have. Hope you understand that. Um, we never trust in our military leader. even. I mean, yeah. yeah. We, you know, we, we've, we never trusted in Ronald Reagan or, or you know, 
It's just not the way the believer thinks. So please don't think that we're somehow we're nationalists in in the new progressive dictionary. No, 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 no. What we're talking about is nations and leaders, and we from a biblical worldview are critiquing the moment. So when we say something like Putin's not gonna, Putin won't be stopped because the U.S. will do nothing. I'm not slamming the Democrat Party who will do nothing. I'm slamming the fact that as a nation, America has left God. And thus, and so God has left America. And we are, we're terrified. I don't know if any of you have been to Washington, D.C. in the last five years, but it's a walled village. Uh, America lives in fear. Mm -hmm. Uh, We're weak. We've got, we spent big money on big toys uh, at war. But when I say weak, we do not have the will mm. to use these weapons. You know, now, Amir, yeah. you know Russia. Russia, Vladimir Putin has no conscience. Um, if you can, if any of you could re- uh, view the documentary called Putin's War, you got to watch it. Putin's War. The guy was a street kid who learned how to cut throats and fight and work his way in to places uh, in power in the St. Petersburg uh, uh, mayor's office, and and then eventually the military and KGB. He's a survivor, and Putin doesn't tap. He doesn't play games or whistle. Hmm. When given a chance, he will pounce. He will, and he believes this is his moment. Uh, we're not we're not happy about it. We are looking at it through a biblical world lens. Exactly. We're watching the progression of the whole world towards towards a very dark place. And sometimes, sometimes there is an accident like it like in, 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 in uh, 2016, an accident that put a halt, at least on America's effort to push the wrong things. And for four years, America started pushing the right things, the right things regarding um, you know the uh, uh, freedom of r- religion, uh, energy, re- religion, yeah. Israel, energy, yeah. military. And then, exactly. And then when America got back to its old ways of push of, and look, it's funny. The Democrats are saying we are fighting for human rights. No, and the lot. funny thing is, the funny thing is, every time they say that, they are actually emboldening the leaders that are they could care less about human rights. And that's when they performed the biggest atrocities during that time. Because, yeah. and so you, you, we did have four years of some sanity that you could see when the right agenda, when, when the right agenda that is more biblically based was promoted, then isn't that interesting? Peace was promoted in the Middle East. And when the wrong agenda, when this psych, psychotic effort to fix the world, Fix the world. Oh, human rights here. Human. Then what happened is, you know, we we are getting a, a world that is on an uh, on a race to almost kill itself and, yeah, and yeah. Commit suicide, commit a suicide. And so, and for us, the believers, we had a chance to see what the world could look like with godly um, ideas and what the the world unfortunately looks like today when it's getting back on the same tracks of promoting the wrong things and they're in suffering the consequences thereof. And so you see, I mean, 45th and, 40, and I'm not saying 45th president was perfect, but, and I'm not even talking about his personality. And I'm, right. I'm, talking, I'm talking about his policy, which is why he was elected to begin with the policy. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, we lived in four years of, 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 of probably something out of order because the order of this world is exactly what we're looking at right now. It's exactly what we see now. And it's sad to see that, but we had first row experience um, in these things. And um, and the Bible never said that we are going to fix the world. The Bible never said that we will prepare the place for Jesus. The Bible says the world is going to be so bad that Jesus is going to come, take us out of here and then pour judgment over this world because it's so bad. And so we're looking forward to it. I tell you, you know, you raised a very interesting thing. It's quite shocking for Americans to consider that under George Washington, the United States experienced success. 
And then for a good while, it didn't. And then John Quincy Adams, a believer, came into office in, in America, experienced success. And there was a huge, like Israel, like reading Chronicles and Kings, Amir, so many bad presidencies and so many troubles until Lincoln came along. And then so many bad presidents until Garfield came along. And then so many bad presidents until Reagan came along. And so many bad presidents until Trump came along. And I'm not talking about are they born again or not. Stop that. I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about who God puts into power. And exactly. Trump did the right things. Trump really copied Reagan a lot and more. But the point is this, it just goes to show you that if a nation, as the scripture speaks, if a nation repents of its sins, and when I say nation, the body of believers in that nation repent of their sins and seek God and honor God, then uh, God, God steps in. Uh, yes. But Amir, tell people, why do we have confidence and we can look at such headline news right now? Uh, this, this stuff Somebody might be watching and saying, "You guys nuts! <laughs> the Bible, you can't trust the Bible. You don't. The well, Bible, you don't know anything about the Bible. You can't trust it." What would you say to somebody who says you can't trust the Bible? From my experience, the Bible so far is more accurate than today's newspaper. Oh, that's from my sure. experience, and I will say that as an experience of an Israeli-born Jew who is the first generation of his family back in the land after two thousand years. If you, if you and I would talk a hundred years ago about Bible prophecy, and we will mention that the Jews must return back and they will have a country and they will have the fig tree will bloom and the Jerusalem will be in their hands and Jerusalem and Israel will be so strong, secure and prosperous that, that an enemy will come from the north to steal and pl take plunder. Everybody will laugh at us. And yet we are the generation, we're the greatest generation in a sense that we've, we've seen more things that God is doing as he promised to do than any other generation since the time of Jesus Christ. We have no right whatsoever to be angry, to be sad, or to be depressed. We are watching history in the making, and it's biblical promises that were given to Israel, given to the church, and, and proclaimed over the world. And, you know, God is not doing those things. He's allowing these things because yeah. he's seen these things. He has seen these things happening already. From his perspective, he knows the future. We don't know the future. He's given us a whole book of revelation to know exactly what not might happen, could happen, what has happened already. John is not suggesting. John writes events that happen, and we just haven't experienced them yet. Not personally us, because we won't be here to experience most of them. But my point is that I have the assurance that Jesus is about to come very soon to take us. And I tell you why, you know, he, he told us two things. First of all, he said in this world, don't expect it to be great. You will have only tribulations. He, he, he prepared us to begin with peace. You will find only in me in this world. You'll find tribulation. And then he said, be of good cheer. Right. Don't be depressed. Be of good cheer because I have overcome. If our focus is on what he did and not of what this world is doing, then we get it. We do exactly what he said. But also he said in Matthew 24, when we see these things begin to happen regarding all the global events, look up and, and, and because your redemption is drawing near. I mean, it's very simple yeah. for us the believers. There is no reason to be afraid. But again, it's only if we know him personally. It's only yep. if we understand the gospel and we walk with him and we know him. Because these things I tell you that you may have eternal life. Uh, yeah. you, you will know that you have eternal life. You know, I mean. And so I think this is maybe the right time for us to challenge it people. Is. Yes, it, is. it really is. And Amir, why don't you ask me this question? Ask me the question. Uh, what what about the rapture versus uh, believers being persecuted? You can go ahead and ask me that question. Okay. Well, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, do you believe that uh, believers can be persecuted and yet it is still going to fit the pre-tribulation rapture? Not only do I believe that believers are persecuted uh, and it doesn't affect the pre-tribulation rapture view, but the, there is a blind spot in American theology, American Christian theology. And that is, 
oh boy, it's getting really bad. Oof. Price of gas is five bucks a gallon here in California. <laughs> Jesus is coming soon. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, listen, Christians have been dying for 2000 years because of their faith. And all of us could die for our faith too. Has nothing to do with the rapture. Christians can be persecuted. Pe listen, according to Voices of the Martyrs, a research group and ministry, there's more Christians being persecuted in 2021 in the year 2021, last year, than any other time in recorded history. That has nothing to do with the rapture coming or not. Christians in America, listen up. Jesus could come back tonight. But if he doesn't, you and I could go through a third world war. We could go through all kinds of violence. We could go through, you know what? Not far from here, tomorrow night, the Rams could win the Super Bowl. You say, isn't that a good deal? In Los Angeles, when we win or when we lose, there's rioting and killings and gunshots. The point is this. Anything could happen anytime, anywhere. It doesn't have any effect on the rapture. What we do know is this. Luke 21, 36 promises us that, the, among many other scriptures, by the way, that the Lord will remove the church from the earth before his wrath comes upon the earth and thank God for the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation and second Thessalonians. It tells you that his wrath is seven years long. It's a seven year tribulation period. Don't think it's three and a half. It's all seven is his wrath out of Daniel chapter nine. So people know what you believe, be strong in your faith. You don't need to worry about any of this stuff, but in this, at the same token, you need to fight for what's right. You need to vote what honors God. You need to speak up when you see something wrong. And you need to pray for the peace of not only Jerusalem, but you need to pray as, oh my, I'm having a, it's Jeremiah 29, 11, verse 7, I think. Jeremiah 29, 7. Maybe somebody can check me on this. Mm -hmm. That wherever you live right now, whoever you are, wherever you live, you're, you're a believer. And you are supposed to pray for the welfare of your city where you live so that it would be blessed so that that city might have peace and that you might have peace. That goes for Moscow. That goes for Kiev. And so we just want to encourage you guys. Don't be fanatical. Don't panic. You don't have to chase things that aren't biblical. Listen, the Bible is so plump with truth. Uh, I've dedicated my life to trying to find all the truth that's in the word. And so be encouraged. Yeah. Thank you for asking think, me that question, Amir. Uh, no, I, <laughs> I, I think one of the reasons people misunderstand everything is because they misunderstand the book of Revelation. Yeah. I think they take things out of context. They select verses that fits what they think now is happening. And, 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 and that's when I believe not only that they cheapen the tribulation because the tribulation people don't understand Tri tribulation will begin with a quarter of planet earth's population gone i mean it's it's by the billions the death that is going to happen and the natural disasters are going to happen people don't have a clue what so when when we have here or there stuff that is a little hard and and may not happen to every generation still it's not the tribulation we have to remember that and, and, and we have to divide the word of God rightly in order not to deceive Amen. the sheep. And I think that uh, that's why I believe more than ever before, Bible prophecy teachings are essential now because the church is either ignorant of prophecy to begin with or got the wrong teachings on prophecy and it's super confused. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, it's, it's really on my heart. And this is why we love to do these things. We love to do conferences. We love to teach online as much as we can, because there is a void there. I mean, I mean, as, let's not forget 90% of the church is not studying Bible prophecy. That's right. it's, it's scary numbers. I mean, we, we are in an echo chamber, we think, because we speak to those who are interested. But I'm encouraging you guys that are watching it now, share this with as many as you can, non-believers or those who don't think the way you may think, because they need to connect the dots. And only when you connect, the only way to connect the dots is with the word of God. There is nothing in this world that will be helpful to understand what really is going on but the Bible. And, and, and 
sometimes the Bible even can, 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 can surprise you. See, Daniel knew the Old Testament. Daniel knew the prophet Jeremiah. And when Daniel was excited that God is about to return the Jews back to the land after 70 years, God revealed to him a greater revelation of what is going to happen to Israel in the future. Now we have something that even Jeremiah didn't have when he wrote his book. We, we have no excuse. We, everything is written for us. We've got the number of days and weeks and months and years of everything that can happen. And we don't know the day that we shouldn't know. <laughs> yeah. so, we, and, and so why are we actually ignoring the things that we have the information and we always want to know that which God says we yeah. don't need to know? It's, 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 it's crazy, isn't it? You no. Know, now, we're kind of going off, you know, it's okay. Amir, you and I, we're just talking right now. A big answer, too, to the reason why so many people go to so many pathetic churches, Amir, is because they've got pastors who went to seminaries who today, very few seminaries who prepare pastors to teach, to enter the pulpit, teach eschatology. They don't teach Bible prophecy anymore at Bible colleges. Very few. Very few. Maybe Dallas, Liberty. But I got to tell you, you've got... There's talented people in the pulpit that could be called to the ministry but are ill-equipped. Or there's talented people in the pulpit, and they're, ta they're just talented people. They can really talk. They're really good at talking, but they don't know the Word, and they don't know the whole counsel of God's Word, so that they don't teach on Bible prophecy. They, 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 those kind of churches and mirrors say things like this. We don't talk about those controversial things. That's a that's a code word for the pastor doesn't know what he's talking about. Well, we don't talk about those things. They're divisive. There's a pastor who will not get into truth. Why do we have this prevailing today? Look, Amir, you gave a teaching on this not too long ago. Apathy. Mm -hmm. yep. It's apathy. It's everywhere. And so it's, it's honestly kind of sad, though you and I are privileged to, to be together right now doing this. It's sad that we have to do it at all because churches should be doing this all over the world. Exactly. But I think that every one of the people that are watching right now has power that we, you guys that are watching right now, you didn't have this power 20 years ago. Today, wow. the, the, to press share is so easy and you can get to hundreds of people with this message. Uh, whereas you couldn't do it five, you know, five or maybe 10, 20 years ago. I think that, um, what we do, oftentimes we watch something and we take it to our, for ourselves and then we ponder on it and we love it, and, but we don't share it. <laughs> and today it was made so easy to share. I mean, it's just one button, share it. And you know what? They may think that you are, uh, you know, uh, sending too much, but maybe one video of all the 20 that you, they get from you, they will watch. And then, boom, things will click and they will understand it. You know, you just never know. Wow. How will they know if nobody tells them? That's, I mean, this is how it is. And, so, you know, I travel around the world. You know how many places around the world don't have the privilege of having teachings uh, on, on the entire Bible? I mean, it, they don't even know that it's there. They, they, yeah. don't, they don't even know that, oh, it is possible. Uh, yeah. I mean, these things do make sense now. I, okay, now I understand. They don't. So they're so confused. Then they get angry, upset. Then they start, you know, collecting food and they, they think that they're about to die in a second or they sell everything. They go up on a mountain. They, you know, this, right. you know, it's sad, but, you know, we do have a lot of power today that we, you know, many people didn't have before. Let's use it. Let's yeah. use it. So what we should do right now, you're talking about using this power that we have right now by this technology and ability. We should probably say right now, before anything else happens, that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, everybody. Well, for that matter, yeah, everybody. Jesus Christ died on the cross for the sins of the entire mankind, the entire human race. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, not everybody benefits from what he did at the cross because there are people who just will refuse to recognize that they're sinners. Every one of us are rank 
horrible sinners. And even if we're uh, law abiding citizens and we brush our teeth and we look good on the outside, we are wretched on the inside. And that's why we need Christ to transform our lives. You guys, we're not talking about adding Christianity onto your life. If, if you're familiar with our church, I don't even use the word Christianity anymore. It's, so, it's just been so abused. I invite people to become followers of Jesus. Mm. That's what we want, okay? And, yeah. and we don't want you to join a church. We don't want your money. We want you to meet Jesus. And that's what you need to focus on. And that is our number one goal. All of these things that you see. Jesus said when you see these things begin to happen, look up. Because your redemption, your redemption draws near. He died on the cross for your sins and mine. And on the third day, Jesus Christ, having been buried, rose from the dead. So he died on the cross for your sins, but then he rose again from the dead to justify you. That is, once you give your life to Christ, you say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. And I, I don't want to do this anymore. I want a new life. Mm. I want you to control my life. I want you to take over. I want to be a follower of yours. When you pray that prayer, he actually takes control of your life and you'll know it. You'll know it. He'll begin to speak to you. He'll, he'll prompt you and you'll have a new life and you'll make new decisions and you'll have a new view about how everything is going on in the world around you. You see it through a biblical worldview. You'll start to have hope. You'll start to have joy. And I got to tell you, I mean, I know Amir and I are not the only ones. Every day that we live, it is so incredibly dynamic and exciting because God is on the move. Don't miss yes. that. Mm -hmm. Amir knows during COVID, we baptized over 3,000 people because people wanted to come and receive Christ and have hope and be yes. baptized. These are amazing days. Yes. Trust exactly. him. No works of righteousness can get you into heaven. No church Amen. member. And, and, and people will finally understand, I hope they do, that. You cannot be born a Christian. I mean, you may have that name on your on your birth certificate, but actually it should be sinner, not Christian. <laughs> Nobody can be born a Christian. If that's so, then you wouldn't need to be born again. The idea is that our first birth only from the water has not been enough. And that's why Jesus said one must be born of the water and the spirit. It must be born again. And this is why... A Christian must know that there was a day in his life when he yep. received Christ and he has been born again, spirit filled, and now he's a new creation. If that's if you never had that day in your life, if you were just born and cruise, uh, I'm, I'm I'm from a Christian family. I'm a you know that makes me a Christian. No, that you know when Jesus was in Nazareth in his own town and he finished reading from Isaiah. This, that that scrolled about about himself being the Messiah. Then he, he actually challenged the Jews there, and he told them, "Religion is not going to save you, and salvation is not by affiliation." He, there were many widows in the time of Elijah, yeah. but to none of them he went. But to a woman in Zarephath, many lepers in the time of Elisha, to none of them he went. But to a Naaman the Assyrian. In other words, God has no partiality and and from the very beginning choosing israel was not because he only loves israel it's so he can actually through them reach the whole world and and god is waiting for the world that wicked um, pagan world this is why paul was so convicted in the heart of athens in act 17 to say but now after all those years of your wrongdoings when making all these gods and all these temples he said but now god is Amen. calling now all men everywhere to repent and and if your church is not teaching you that there's a point where you must repent and then accept the lord and then be born again then you don't really you didn't get the gospel the gospel is about first repentance understanding that you're a sinner and then asking him to not only forgive, but to be now the Lord of your life. That is what the whole process of birth again is. If, if that it's something that you never done in your life and you think, oh, I was born Christian. I was born to a Christian family. It's a lie. It's no one was born a Christian. You know, you can be born religious, a Jew, a Muslim, a Catholic, an Orthodox, but the word Christian is a follower of Christ. You can only be a follower of Christ if you made up your mind 
to yep. follow him because you understand that you cannot do it alone. And 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 uh, you know, I I love that because Jesus came to put an end to religion, not to create, oh, yes. a new one, not to create a new one. So. Yeah. You know, and, and Amir, we're having a blast on Sunday mornings in the book of Romans because Paul just shatters all of that in verses right. one, two, the chapters, chapters one, two, and three. But, you know, a lot of people, uh, like, like, like many Jews in the world, they say, well, I was, I'm circumcised. I'm okay with God. And Christians, Christians, I should say, those who say, I'm okay with God, uh, I was baptized. I was baptized as an infant. I was baptized at, at two According to the Bible, all you did is get wet. You got wet. That's all you did. You got wet because the Bible tells us to repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Water mm -hmm. baptism cannot save you. It's the repentance. The thief on the cross was never baptized. He, he clearly, before the eyes of Jesus, repented in his heart because what he said was, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He believed that Jesus was more than who he was on the cross. He wasn't just a man dying at the cross. This was God being crucified. And that thief on the cross, ignorant of religion, probably thank God for that, put his faith in the fact that Jesus would be coming back. Mm -hmm. Jesus has a kingdom. And that's what all of you need to trust in the fact that, look, we're here right now to, to, to spread the gospel to everyone we meet. Outside of that, this is not our home. Yeah. I mean, Amir, Amir uh, you, you can't tell by where Amir is right now, but believe it or not, he's in Hawaii. That's a really ugly background. I know. Uh, unlike you, I just have a, a drywall behind me. But because if I put the camera outside, the sun is setting right now, and it will make the camera go crazy. So, so he's in Hawaii, but uh, that's nothing compared to our real home in heaven. No. I'm in, I'm in California tonight, and Amir made me put this shirt on. It's so warm, and, uh, you know, it's <laughs> – look, it's not our home. Heaven's our home. Our citizenship is in heaven. Exactly. And, and just like all the embassies are now – before the war comes, they are being evacuated. Yes. We, the ambassadors, we will be taken home before the war, the great war of God against this world and the prince of this world will start. So I love that. Uh, I mean, we can see that even in, in the diplomatic world today, a ambassadors are taken home, are called home before a war is being uh, waged. And it's the same Greek word. There's a word for an ambassador that's an ambassador to a friendly nation. And then there's a word for ambassador toward a hostile nation. Mm -hmm. And that in 2 Corinthians 5, we are the ambassadors of the Lord in this world, which is hostile correct. toward us. You're so that was that's exactly correct. So um look, I've not had any news notifications while we've been on. I've had my no, phone. Uh, no, no. Uh, I want to encourage you if you haven't uh, downloaded Telegram to do that, uh, because I I um I update around the clock what's going on. Um, on Telegram, just so you know, um, and um, so far the war there has not started, but there is a war, a greater war, the spiritual oh. war, and I think that, um, I thank the Lord that we started with current events and we ended up with the gospel because this is the full armor that we need to put on ourselves is on a daily war, and it's not Russia, and it's not Ukraine, it's the, the powers and principalities that are, are not there, you know, waiting for a day to start. This war started long ago, and it's only getting more and more intense. And in, in, unless we have the full armor of Ephesians yeah. 6, it's going to be very hard for us to be able to uh, sustain ourselves. Good. It's exactly 60 minutes. Jack, if you can just uh, close in a prayer, and this is it. Yeah, Amir. Th first of all, thank you for uh, making the time. And uh, so uh, listen up, everybody. Before I pray, um, Amir was so kind uh, to to join us tonight. And um, maybe, uh, you know, we threw this together. Uh, and maybe with what unfolds, uh, I know each of us have our own platforms and stuff, but maybe with, uh, with the days ahead, it may be necessary that 
that we uh, reconnect. So we'll let you know through Amir's media in, in real life, uh, Behold Israel and real life, we'll let you guys know. So um, stand strong. Jesus is on his throne. Nothing's going to happen without God's watchful eye over it and upon it. And you just make sure that you're resting in the finished work of Christ. Amen. Father, we thank you. Lord, I thank you for Amir, and I pray that you'd bless his, his Sunday uh, tomorrow in Hawaii. Lord, I pray that you'd bless us here in Southern California. May the pulpits, Lord, that you occupy by your servants, may you catch the pulpits on fire around the world tomorrow, Lord, with the gospel truth. May you pour down your Holy Spirit in these last days. May tens of thousands, if not millions of people, come to Christ tomorrow around the world. Amen. Father, we pray that there would be um, eyes opened and veils lifted. Amen. I pray for my uh, Jewish brothers and sisters in the world who have not yet seen Yeshua HaMashiach, has not yet seen Amen. Jesus as Messiah. Lord, I pray for some dear friends of mine in Los Angeles who, who they don't know Jesus yet like that. And I Amen. pray, dear God, and that you'd pull back the veil now. Yes. And Father, that tomorrow, honestly, Lord, that tomorrow would be our last day mm. to worship you on earth. Lord, I'm going to go into the pulpit tomorrow as though it's the last chance I have to mm. preach. Amen. And Lord, I pray that all around the world there'd be a sense of urgency because, Lord, we, we've not been guaranteed tomorrow. Mm. Um, so, God, we give you our lives. We love you. And Father, for anyone who's out there right now listening, and they don't know what to do. Lord, hear their prayer when they say, Dear Jesus, forgive me of my sins, and I want you to be the Lord, the King, the Ruler, the God of my life. Mm -hmm. I believe in you, and I want to follow you now, and I, I turn to you. Yes. Lord, scoop them up and do mm -hmm. with them what you did to me in a mirror the day that we bowed our knee to your Lordship. Thank you for this time. In Jesus' name. And all God's amen. people said, <laughs> amen. 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 Thank you. All right, you guys. God bless you. Thank you, Amir. Thank you, Jack. And may everyone share this video. Thank you. Share amen. the gospel through this. Bye-bye. Yeah.